Hi everyone, this is part two on Prophets and Prophecies. Because people love prophecy, be sure you study my part one first. A lot of important scriptures in there. Do a YouTube search on rapture so you understand what, what I'm about to say. TV is full of prophets who for the entire month of October 2024 have been saying without any hesitation that the rapture, the pre-trib, pre-tribulation rapture is definitely about to happen and they even gave specific dates and then the great tribulation would follow immediately on its heels. All of those preaching that this month of October 2024 is the time the rapture will happen, all of them are false prophets. Their visions and dreams from God and claiming God spoke to them as they explained it were false. Why? Why are they false prophets? The rapture didn't happen in October 2024. And they were so adamant. Look up YouTube uh, search bar, put in rapture. So many, many, once you start watching a few, so many more pop up. Deuteronomy 18 verses 20 to 22 is very clear. If a prophet claims to speak for God and it doesn't happen, he's a false prophet and shouldn't even be allowed to live, at least back in the days back then. Deuteronomy 18 verses 20 to 22. The rapture that they said they got straight from God didn't happen. Many were very adamant it was sure to happen on trumpets, the Rosh Hashanah. Then they moved to Yom Kippur. Okay, maybe it's Yom Kippur. Then they moved to the eighth day after the feast, Shemini Yatzeret. That, that for sure, it had to happen. They said that over and over during the fall feast, though they themselves, I don't believe any of them, keep the whole, the God's holy days. Some claimed visions from God, dreams from God. Others warned people, They'd better pay attention or they won't get raptured. <clears throat> I wanted to address all this sooner, but I was tied up with various hurricanes getting ready for them and the consequences afterwards. And then plus I had to rush down to California to be with my brother, whom it seemed at the time was about to die. And please pray for my brother, Lauren. Folks, there will be no pre-tribulation rapture. I'm talking about it now. Certainly not in October 25, uh, 24, or even 2025. It's not going to happen. They needed it to start on Trumpets or Atonement this year to, because it fits so beautifully into the 25, 20 days that are mentioned in Daniel that ends on Atonement seven years from now. So it had to start on Atonement, but it didn't happen. The pre-trib rapture is a false doctrine anyway. So don't get me wrong though, we're definitely in the end of days. There will definitely be seals of God being opened, the four horsemen of the apocalypse, the great tribulation, the worst time ever, <clears throat> the seventh trumpet, and the seven trumpet plagues, the seven bowl plagues, definitely, no question, and soon. So I'm not dismissing that we're in the very end of the end days, but a pre-trib rapture of all the saints and those who have died in Christ as well, because they use 1 Thessalonians 4, verses 16 and 17, which is really about the resurrection that happens when Christ returns. No, it's not going to happen the way they say it. And if all those in Christ are raptured up before the great tribulation, how will there ever be enough saints around for the Antichrist beast power to persecute and kill? Revelation 13, 7. Covered all that in part one. Be sure you listen to part one. The great false prophet of Revelation 13, deceiving, calling fire down from heaven like Elijah did. He hasn't appeared yet. So where would all the elect come from that Revelation 13 says will be killed because they won't take his name or his 666 number. We're all the saints. They're all raptured away. So welcome again, my dear brothers and sisters in Christ. 
This is Philip Shields, host of Light on the Rock. And thanks for coming. I really appreciate you coming. Remember, <clears throat> remember to check out our nonstop radio broadcast around the world, 24 hours a day, in almost every country now. Just go to zeno.fm forward slash radio forward slash light dash on the, with a dash in between the words, light on the rock. I'll put it in the notes. Check it out. Check the notes to get the exact link. <clears throat> it's playing 24-7. So this is part two on recognizing false prophets. Be sure to study part one, where I showed you the many verses of Jesus' warnings that there would be so many false prophets and teachers, so many. <clears throat> Matthew 7, verses 21 to 23 says that they'll even say to him, Hey, wait a minute. Did we not cast out demons in your name? Did we not preach in your name? Did we not do wonderful miracles in your name? And Yeshua will say to them, I never knew you, you who practice lawlessness. No law. We don't have to keep the Ten Commandments, they say. You who practice no law. I never knew you. But I also showed you there would be a time when true prophets and prophetesses, female prophets, will come within and among God's true children, true ones. So be sure to study it, part one. God does hear his children. Some of you have told me you're under the impression that God speaks prophecies and insp inspiration and insights only to the top leader of the church. <clears throat> that is not true. I'll show you again in more scriptures today. God does speak to his children. God wants to speak to his children, not just to the top leaders, as some of you seem to believe. God wants to speak to you too. It's been rather wild lately, though, with definite prophecies of the pre-trib. Dozens of them, well-known names even, like Perry Stone, David Jeremiah, Max Lucado, and many, many more, saying things like, there won't be any believers in 2025 left on the earth. And uh, some were saying, don't miss it. The rapture will likely happen tomorrow night on Rosh Hashanah. When that didn't happen, they moved it to Yom Kippur. When that didn't happen, they moved it to the feast. When that didn't happen, they moved it to the eighth day. When that didn't happen, oh, we were off two days. We, we should have started the calendar two days later because the sighting of the new moon was two days later than the Jewish calendar says. So they tried October 26th. When that didn't happen, now they're saying it's going to happen on the evening of October 31st, the eve of All Saints Day. They're saying the rapture now is going to happen on, at least some are saying, on Halloween. No, 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 there will be no rapture this Halloween. Think of the damage they're causing by getting believers' hopes up, and then nothing happens. Maybe, maybe this could be one reason for the great falling away prophesied in Second Thessalonians 2, verses 1 to 4. A great falling away, a great departing from the faith, apostasia. Those po false prophets believe it has to happen this year. They forget Yeshua's clear statements that nobody knows the day nor the hour. Plus his clear statement that he will come at an hour you do not expect. That's what he said. Matthew 24, verses 42 to 44. Matthew 24, verses 44 to 42 to 44, the end of the Mount of Olive, the Olivet prophecy <clears throat> for the end time. Verse 42, Matthew 24, Watch therefore, for you do not know. You, you twelve apostles, do not know, you twelve disciples, what hour your Lord is coming. But know this, had the master of the house known the hour the thief would come, he would have made preparations, he would have watched, and not allowed his house to be broken into. Therefore you also be ready, be watching, 
for the Son of Man is coming at an hour you do not expect. So as I watched these things, I chuckled with my wife or to my wife and said, well, now we know when it won't happen because he comes at a time you do not expect. And when he comes, it'll be sudden, as in the days of Lot, when the angels, being merciful to him, pulled him out. And then suddenly the cities were destroyed. It's going to be like the days of Noah, everything going normal. And then Noah, and him, in that case, went into the ark and waited there for seven days. And then, boom, the, the waters of the deep came up and the rain, 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 real violently for 40 days. But the deep opened up. There's more water under the earth than on top of the earth. I don't know if you know that or not. It was sudden. They weren't expecting it. So he says we need to be ready. We can't be sleeping spiritually. But now get this. Yeshua himself was very clear when he asked, and I think it's in Luke 18, will he find faith on the earth when he returns? Where it's a time of low faith. It's a time of Laodiceanism, lack of zeal. In Revelation 3, the end of it. It's a time of the ten virgins who all took oil Five were foolish and t didn't take enough. Five were wise and took extra oil. But guess what? All ten of them, every last one of them, including the wise ones. Let's see what it says. Matthew 25, verses 4 and 5. But the wise took oil in their vessels with their lamps. Matthew 25, verse 5 now. But while the bridegroom, this, these are Yeshua's words, his words, the bridegroom was delayed. They all, they all slumbered and slept. Even the five wise virgins slept. The other five were not allowed into the wedding supper in verses 10 to 13 of Matthew 25. So he's telling us, wake up. That's what it says. If we are part, if we are part of the 10 virgins, guess what? That means you and I are asleep, according to the Son of God. And you and I need to wake up. Spiritually, I preach to myself. The last few days, especially, I've been talking to God and just saying, I know some areas of my life are, are, I'm weak. And please help me strengthen those areas and remove the things that are not pleasing to you. Come and live inside me. Be my life, dear Jesus. But we're letting spiritual laziness and sleep come into our lives. We're not zealous. We're asleep, including you. Yes, you. Wake up. I want you all to go back, write this down and go back on your own and slowly read 1 Thessalonians 5, verses 1 to 10. As a thief in the night, unexpected, or as labor pains on an expectant pregnant woman. You know, once a woman's labor pain begins, the pains and contractions happen more and more frequently, more and more painfully until the baby is finally born. We are going to see the contractions, if you will, the world events, more and more frequently, more and more frequent hurricanes and earthquakes and tornadoes, tsunamis, wars, more and more wars, more painful wars until Christ comes. So it will be in these last days, wild and scary times, but God has not appointed us to wrath, it says in 1 Thessalonians 5, verse 9. <clears throat> Read that, please. I'll put these in the notes, too, but uh, for time's sake, please. It's, uh, the coming of God, will, uh, of, of the Lord, will, will come as a thief in the night. They'll say peace and safety, but in fact there will be, there will be sudden destruction that will come upon them as labor pains upon a pregnant woman. They shall not escape. 
But you, brethren, are not in darkness. You must not be sleeping, he says in verse 6. So back to the false prophets. Many of them, many of them, those false prophets, will seem very nice, will speak powerfully, will use the Bible, will use the name Jesus. But Yeshua warned us how to be able to spot and beware of them. For there will be many false prophets, even false messiahs, he said. All the apostles, John, Paul, Peter, Jude, who wrote books in the Bible, they all talked about false prophets, and they all warned us to beware. Beware, be aware of what's happening. Don't be following them. Certainly don't be going to ones that have hosted well-known false prophets, like Sid Roth hosting all these false prophets who prophesied that Trump would be consecutive second president. Didn't happen. And other things that he's prophesied. False prophets could deceive us by their powerful signs and miracles. Even prophets in the church. Just because they attend with you doesn't mean they're a true prophet. You have to test them. Remember Jesus said, beware of false prophets who come to you dressed in sheep's clothing. That means they're coming as a member of the church. We are the sheep, ravenous wolves in sheep's clothing. Matthew 7, 15. Matthew 7, 15. Not just some who are appearing as false shepherds, but as false sheep. So be on your guard, especially when you're talking to brethren. Your guard must be up. He said, beware of them. Remember especially the Revelation 13 great false prophet will be so powerfully convincing that Yeshua says in Matthew 24 that uh, performing great miracles that if possible even deceive the very elect. Almost get there, but not quite. But almost deceive even the elect. And he will kill those who won't come under their 666 demands. Now I'm not saying we shouldn't ever or can ever listen or watch people talking about prophecy and world events. But especially if they're not saying, God told me to say this, or I had this dream, and they're just trying to explain in terms of world news about Gog and Magog, or the Psalm 83 group of nations, or where Persia meets and uh, you know fits into all of this. Uh, I have no problem. I have no problem uh, watching some of those, as long as I keep my guard up, okay? And uh, as long as they're not claiming that they're telling me something they heard directly from God. And yes, their speculation can end up being wrong, but at least it wasn't a prophecy. You who preach, unless God did speak to you, and God will speak to his true prophets. Amos 3, 7. He will do nothing until he first reveals his secret to his servants, the prophets, the true prophets. Jeremiah 23, verses 25 to 26. The end of Jeremiah 23. There are many warnings there when God is saying, there. they say, I said this to them. They say, I gave them this dream. I gave them this vision. I did not. I did not. Jeremiah 23, verses 25 and 26. I've heard what the prophets have said who prophesied lies, saying, I have dreamed, I have dreamed. Boy, I hear that a lot. How long will this be in the hearts of the prophets who prophesy lies? Indeed, they're prophets of the deceit of their own heart. And again in verse 30, 32, God says clearly he's against prophets who claim God spoke to them. If God indeed spoke to his true prophets, like he did Isaiah, Jeremiah, Ezekiel, Daniel, and will again to the two witnesses at the end time, and will again probably to many prophets within the church, which prophesied to happen in Joel 2. The end of Joel 2, go back and read it. 
And Peter even quoted that in Acts 2. So when God does speak to true prophets, that's fine. God will speak to his true prophets and prophetesses in the end time. Remember, Philip had four daughters who were prophetesses. Now, what are the main differences between the true and the false prophets? The true prophets' prophecies come to pass, first of all, always. Now, some of the false prophets' prophecies will also come to pass, but not always. So there's some feature in it that's not that didn't happen. God's prophecies to his true prophets in every detail will happen exactly. And those true prophets themselves are living lives of obedience, even though no one lives perfectly. We're striving for excellence. We won't be perfect on our own. We can only be perfect through God imputing his righteousness to us. And they point their listeners to repent, to turn back to God, to obey God, have faith in him, turn from their wicked ways, repent. A common message of true prophets is repent. Even in my sermon today, what have I been saying? I've been saying, wake up, don't sleep. Beware. Obey Jesus, what he's saying. And they don't talk just about prophecy only, but about Christian living as well. So keep all of those things in mind. Now let's read some scriptures about prophets among the brethren in the church. Remember, it says in Ephesians 4, verses 11 and 12, I quoted this last time, I think, that God gave some, God gave some to be apostles, some prophets, evangelists, pastors, and teachers, and so on. Now, please don't claim to be an apostle or an evangelist or pastor or teacher unless you're ordained by a qualified man. The Corinthian church had quite a few who could prophesy as well as speak in tongues. Remember, to prophesy could mean to foretell, predict, foretell, can also mean to speak under inspiration. And that's all through 1 Corinthians 12 and 1 Corinthians 14. I recommend you study those chapters slowly, carefully. But prophets didn't just come from the leadership of the church. Yes, even I struggle with that. If someone's not a leader, not an ordained man, but is apparently prophesying, we're not used to that. Get used to it. So many Church of God folks were taught that God speaks only to the one leader over the church, just to him. That's not what Scripture says. God wants to speak to each and every one of his children in his own way, some in terms of prophecy. 1 Corinthians 14, verse 1. After saying the greatest gift of all from God is love, he then proceeds in chapter 14. There were no chapters when Paul wrote it. Pursue love, desire spiritual gifts, but especially that you may prophesy. Now look how much Paul encourages some to use their gift of prophesying. I don't think enough of us are ready to accept this among regular brethren, especially female regular brethren. But Joel 2 says it's coming, and we should be ready for men and women to be prophesying. Let's continue in 1 Corinthians 14, verse 1, that you may prophesy them, verse 2. Um, for he who speaks in a tongue does not speak to men but to God, for no one understands him. However, in the Spirit he speaks mysteries. But he who prophesies, speak, speaking under inspiration or foretelling, either one, speaks edification and exhortation and comfort to men. He who speaks in a tongue edifies himself. He who prophesies edifies the church. Excuse me. I wish, verse 5, you all spoke with tongues, but even more that you prophesied. Even more that you prophesied. That's what I want you to be doing. So some of you really emphasize tongues. That's not what Paul's emphasizing here. Verse 5, I wish you all spoke with tongues, but even more, 1 Corinthians 14, 5, 
even more so that you prophesied, for he who prophesies is greater than he is greater than he who speaks with tongues, unless he interprets that the church may receive edification. And then in verse 29 to 33, or 32 anyway, therefore two, let, let two or three prophets speak, let the others judge. If anything is revealed to someone sitting by, let the first one keep silent. For you can all prophesy one by one, that all may learn, and all may be encouraged. And the spirit of the prophets, spirits of the prophets, are subject to the prophets. Imagine a church service where different ones are getting up and giving their inspired teaching from God, and that that is being accepted. That's what Paul is describing here. Verse 39, Therefore, brethren, desire earnestly to prophesy, and do not forbid, do not forbid to speak with tongues. I see many church congregations forbidding both, someone who has a prophecy and someone who has a, a gift of tongues. As you all ready, are you all ready to receive that kind of church service? Even I have to recondition my thinking to, uh, to what it's describing here. But if any of you dislike prophecies, you need to unlearn that, or if you dislike someone prophesying. Revelation 1.3, Blessed is he who reads and those who hear the words of this prophecy. Revelation 1.3, Blessed are those who hear the words of this prophecy and keep those things which are written in it, for the time is near. And then 1 Thessalonians 5.19-21, do not quench the spirit. Do not despise prophecies. Test all things. Do not despise prophecies, but test them. So identifying the true prophets and prophet, uh, the true prophets, um, whether you're talking about Jonathan Kahn or Perry Stone or Max Locato, R.C. Sproul, David Jeremiah, or other names you may not even know, if someone is speaking on prophetic events, I'm okay to hear their insights and opinions and speculation, but I get a lot more caution once they start saying, God told me to say this. God gave me a dream this morning or last night. If they don't say that, then I'm more willing to listen to their speculation. But any of you speaking prophetically on prophecy, and you know it's the way you see it, say so. This is speculation. Don't say God gave me this to tell you unless God really did. And the prophets have to be teaching us to obey God. They have to be teaching us to keep his commandments. Their message, you know, Jesus even said that. If you love me, keep my commandments. Okay, he says that. 1 John 2, verses 3 to 6. You can't say you know God. You can't say you know Christ unless you keep his commandments. 1 John 2, verses 3 to 6. Read that. There's so many teaching us we don't have to keep the commandments when Jesus, in fact, said heaven and earth will pass before the one jot or tittle will ever pass from, from his law. So I would put someone like Jonathan Kahn into this group of tying in world events with parallels to Scripture. He mostly ties in past events to Scripture and parallels to today. <clears throat> Not as much as looking ahead and telling us this will happen in 2025 or 26 or 2030 or 2031, but he does warn the president and the nation to repent. He definitely does a good job with that, and that's a good thing. I don't think he calls himself a prophet, though many others, I think, are doing that. He does teach obedience. Jonathan Kahn does speak on how our nation is paralleling ancient Israel's demise though he doesn't seem to realize that America is ancient Ephraim in the Bible, the greatest of the 12 tribes. The greatest is America, not Britain. Many think Ephraim was Britain because of the 
company of nations thing in Genesis 48. But what do you think United States means? 50 countries united. A state is a country. It's not a province, okay? It's a state. It's, a, it's like 50 countries united together federally under federal laws, but each one with their own laws. Mm. They're not lost. They're powerful nations today in Northwestern Europe, in America, Canada, Australia. Even James, in James 1.1, 1, 1, address, he says, this is to the 12 tribes, the 12 tribes which are scattered abroad. James says that, James 1.1. 1, 1. I don't believe Khan calls him, himself a prophet, but he definitely does call on America to repent, and that's good. To the best of my knowledge, he does keep Sabbath, but not the holy days. Did he keep the Feast of Tabernacles? I doubt it, though he spoke during the Feast of Tabernacles. Though he's a rabbi, a Jew, who wears a, a, a talit over his head when he prays, he does preach Jesus, Yeshua, as he says. Yeshua is the correct, correct pronunciation. He does preach Yeshua as Messiah. He does have a Friday night service. I don't believe he has a Sabbath, Saturday service, last time I called but he does have a large Sunday service, so that bothers me. To me, he seems to be dabbling more like more than I'd like to. He's dabbling in Judaism and Protestantism, uh, dabbling a bit in that. He wears a talit shawl like Judaism, so I'm cautious. And some of his definite prophecies, like the one in 2015 about the Shemitah, and that year he prophesied subsequent total collapse of our economy in the U.S. dollar, that never happened. So, what does that tell you? So, as far I, do, I don't know that he's a true prophet. He, 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 I, I like hearing him and his analysis of world events. I don't know that he's a true prophet. So now let's learn how to be crystal clear when it comes to identifying prophets. Never, of course, seek out psychics and crystal ball readers and uh, mediums who speak to the dead. They're doing that by demonism. Palm readers, don't do it. Don't go there. And 1 John 4, verses 1 to 4, 1 to 2. 1 John 4, 1 and 2. <clears throat> Beloved, do not believe every spirit, but test the spirits, whether they're from God. Many false prophets have gone out into the world. So number one, if someone doesn't teach actual biblical truths, obeying God, keeping the commands, keeping the Sabbath. If they're not preaching those things to their listeners, I cannot accept that they're an active, true prophet of God. Isaiah 8, verses 19 and 20, it, it says there that in verse 20, to the law and to the testimony, if they don't speak according to this word, it's because there's no light in them. A true, active prophet will preach God's word truthfully, accurately. He'll steer you to obedience. Number two, so if number one, a true prophet will teach obedience. will teach you to repent and so on. And a lot of that. Number two, a true prophet, or minister for that matter, will confess Yeshua, Jesus, as the Messiah and Son of God. There's a Karaite Jew teacher who has some truths but refuses to accept that Yeshua is the Son of God and the promised Messiah that the Jews were looking for, who came 2,000 years ago, and because of that, I, I, to me, he loses a lot of credibility with me. His name is as one of the names of the books in the Old Testament. 1 John 2, verses 22 and 22, 23. 1 John 2, verses 22 and 23. Who is a liar but he who denies that Jesus is the Christ, the Anointed One, the Messiah. That's what Christ means. He is Antichrist who denies the Father and the Son. Whoever denies the Son does not have the Father either. He who acknowledges the Son has the Father also. So 1 John 4 verses 2 and 3 is also worth reading on your own. Acknowledging Christ has to come in the flesh, that he has come in the flesh. So number two, a true prophet confesses Yeshua is the promised Messiah. 
Number three, true prophets point us to repenting of sin and obeying God, becoming a new, converted, converted person of God in Christ. Jeremiah 23, verses 21 and 23, or 22. Jeremiah 23, verses 21 and 22. God speaking, I have not sent these prophets, and yet they ran. I have not spoken to them, yet they prophesied. But if they had stood in my counsel and had caused my people to hear my words, they would have turned them from their evil way and from the evil of their doing. So combine that notion with what we're about to read. At number three, a true prophet will point you to repentance and obedience. Number four, when a true prophet foretells something that in fact does come to pass, now what are you to do? Combine it with what we just read. He must still be teaching you to seek after the one true God. If he doesn't, even if what he predicted or prophesied does happen, he's a false prophet. Deuteronomy 13, 1-5 If there arises among you a prophet or a dreamer of dreams, and he gives you a sign or a wonder, Deuteronomy 13, okay, verse 2 now, and the sign or the wonder comes to pass. The one he spoke of you saying, let us, but he says, let us go after other gods, which you haven't known. Let us serve them. Don't listen to the words of that prophet. If, he's, if he's teaching you wrong is what he's saying. He's not a true prophet. And he goes on to say in verse five, that prophet shall be put to death. Okay, so just because what they pro uh, prophesy does happen does not make them a true prophet. Okay, they have to do all these things. Uh, just because a prophet or a, or a minister does wonderful miracles does not make them, even if they're done in the name of Jesus, in the name of Yeshua, does not make him a true prophet. Matthew 7, 21, 23, if they teach lawlessness, I never knew you, Jesus says. Now, number five. If what they say doesn't come to pass, well, that's an easy sign for you that they're definitely not speaking for God because when God says something, it will come to pass. Deuteronomy 18, verses 18 to 22. Uh, I'll, I'll start in verse 20. The prophet who presumes to speak a word in my name, which I have not commanded him to speak, or who speaks in the name of other gods, that prophet shall die. But if you say, well, how will we know the word the Lord has, which the Lord has not spoken? How do we know when, it, when you haven't said so? When a prophet speaks in the name of the Lord, the name of Jehovah, if the thing doesn't happen or come to pass, that is the thing which the Lord has not spoken the prophet who's spoken presumptuously. Don't be afraid of him. Don't be impressed by him. If it doesn't happen, he's not a true prophet. God's true prophets, when they say God said something to them, it will always come to pass. Okay? Now, um, let me add this point. True prophets telling you, We'll never miss, okay? Let me add this point. God can tell us what's going to happen, but upon man's repentance, God sometimes will change his mind, and the original prophecy won't happen, like the story of Jonah and Nineveh, or the story of Isaiah telling King Hezekiah to get his affairs in order because he was about to die, and God changed his mind when Hezekiah prayed earnestly. But the reversal should also be clearly from God in those cases. So let me state again, prophets galore are coming out of the woodwork. Watch, watch out, beware, wake up. And please be aware that you and I, apparently, if we're part of the ten virgins of Matthew 25, are asleep. And in the last days, well, will he find faith? I think that's in Luke 18, around verse 7 or 8 or so. And, and also the last church that's mentioned where Christ says, I am knocking, I'm right at the door, open up, but you're lukewarm, you're lukewarm, 
miserable, blind, naked, all of that. So the condition of the church at the very end time is not a good one. Do your best to be seeking after God, repenting, seeking Him, obeying Him, getting rid of areas of your life that are not exactly pleasing to God. I've, I've been trying to do that in my life. Areas that I know could be better and more pleasing to God. And again, realize there will be prophets in God's church and prophetesses. Prophetesses. Expect it. I didn't say pastors. I didn't say preachers. I said prophetesses like Anna in Luke chapter 2, like Philip's daughters. And they are prophesied to appear, like Joel 2 says. Manservants, maidservants, and so on, and more. But just test the spirits. And be sure God is really speaking to them. When, when I, I put my guard up way up when they say, God told me to say this, or God gave me this dream, or God tell, told me to warn you. I, I, I might listen to him, but I'm, I've got my guard up. Okay, guys, I hope that helps. And may God bless you. And may we get stronger and more zealous and more awake as we come to the very last days. In Yeshua's mighty name, amen.